Hey everyone, welcome back to Better Biomed. Today, I want to talk to you guys about brushless motors and tools. And the reason I want to talk to you guys about this is because it seems like there's a lot of marketing hype surrounding brushless motors and tools, and you're going to see them everywhere. And you might not realize it, but brushless motors are around in your life more than you think. And believe it or not, they haven't been around so long. I think it was the 80s when they created the MOSFETs that uh, they were able to correctly propel them fast enough because it could switch the power fast enough. But anyway, I want to share with you guys uh, a couple of the brushless motors that I've got here in my shop. I'm going to tear apart one of my tools and I'm going to show you guys what exactly is inside a brushless tool. So stay tuned. We're going to check out brushless tools. Here's just a few of the brushless tools that I've got here in my shop. I gathered them up real quick. I've got brushless sanders. I've got a brushless router, impact driver, oscillating tool. We've got a drill impact driver. Brand new, these are so cool. This is a 18 gauge pin nailer and I've got circular saw. But I've got a couple other cool things here in my shop that uh, if you look over there, I've got a brushless lawnmower. And over on the wall there, you might see it, the orange thing, that is a brushless weed whacker. How cool is that? Man, I'll tell you what, those things are a game changer. But brushless tools, Let's go into some of the things that makes them really important. One of the things that you're going to notice about brushless tools is they always have the lithium ion batteries. And the reason they have lithium batteries is because lithium batteries can handle really high current draw. And these motors are extremely powerful, but when you put a, a serious load on them, they can draw some current. Some of the other things that are about these batteries is they're smart. Almost all of them have some sort of battery level gauge and let's see if I can pop one of these bad boys off. All of these batteries have temperature sensing pins and sometimes some of these pins are for balancing the cells because inside these batteries there's a whole bunch of cells and if you charge them all up equally then the one that's got the least resistance will take the most charge and you could start a fire. So that's why you want all your cells to charge up equally, and that's what this little guy's for. If you ever wonder why there's not just two pins on one of these batteries, it's so that they can monitor the battery for, for current draw and make sure that it's not overheating, and it's also for balancing of the cells when you charge them. And these two pins right here on these tools, given these are all DeWalt's, but almost every single uh, brushless tool is going to have the same style of connector where they got monitoring pins and then current pins the the current pins are obviously these giant ones right here that's just a couple of the brushless tools i got and let's take a look at some of the other ones but you guys didn't know this right here is a spindle for my cnc machine that is a brushless motor right up above it these guys that are driving it these are nema 34 12 actually those ones are 12 newton meter this one here is an 8 newton meter and that's the amount of torque that these guys can put out while it's in a all activated mode which is a hold so that's that's how they're rated is their holding torque so how much force it takes to rotate that motor when it's being told to stay still so one of the things that makes brushless motors very special is that they they run on dc power and the DC power is uh, pulsed and based on the frequency and obviously based on the voltage is how strong the motor is going to be. But based on the frequency is how fast the motor is going to spin. How does it know how fast it's going? Well, these motors almost all have Hall effect sensors. And I've seen other things like rotary disc encoders and stuff like that. But most of these will actually have a Hall effect sensor that's aimed right at the solid rotor in the middle. See, unlike brushed motors, which has a, it has a rotor in the middle that is commutated, which means the voltage goes into the rotor in the middle. Based on where the, the brushes are on the ring, that's what coils are being activated in the rotor in the middle. These ones here do not send any electricity to the rotor in the middle. These ones here actually are pulsating electricity to the coils on the outside. The rotor has a permanent magnet, which is very strong magnet 
but it's so cool because it doesn't have any electricity going to the middle part of the motor. It's just a, a super magnet, basically. So these motors, uh, they have a Hall effect sensor that communicates all the way back there to the, the brain. That tells them, hey, you're going this fast, or hey, you should be going this fast, and you're not going that fast, so you're in a stall. And it will notify if it's in a torque overload. And these guys are a large example. These here are servo controllers, but these ones here are also brushless motor controllers, drivers. They take uh, pulses and they feed them out to the motor on these blue wires in the bottom. And based on the frequency of those pulses, that is how fast the motor is going to spin. And right here next to them, this guy here is a VFD or variable frequency drive. In the VFD, that is also a brushless motor controller. And it powers the spindle right there, the stainless steel motor. So the faster the frequency, the faster that little guy spins. Very cool. I'm going to show you guys what it looks like inside one of these drills. Oh, look at this. I forgot I even had these out. These are some of the batteries, uh, varying sizes and capacities. These are all lithium batteries. And you can see a couple of the cells right here. They look like giant AA batteries. But this pack has four cells, two down there and two down there. This is a tiny, tiny brushless motor. Look at that guy. I hope the phone can even pick it up. Look at that. Notice it's got three wires coming out. Those three wires each goes to a coil or an end of a coil on this motor. And the cool thing about brushless motors, I and mean, some of you guys might not realize this, but let's say that this motor is driving in one direction and you want to reverse the direction. It's got three wires and if you want to reverse the direction, all you got to do is take two of the wires and re reverse the polarity on two of the wires. Any two, doesn't matter. And when you reverse the polarity on any two wires, the motor will reverse its current direction. So if it was going clockwise, now it's going to go counterclockwise. And without the technology that we have now in little motors, we wouldn't have things like these tiny little drones. Actually, these are quadcopters. I know some guys don't like it when I call them drones. But you can see they all have these tiny, tiny little motors on them. They're all three-phase motors, brushless motors. Three-phase because each one of those wires gets a phase or a pulse. And here's a little driver. And these are basically the brain box that power three-phase motors or brushless motors. So you can see you got your incoming power here which is DC power and then over here you got high frequency pulse DC that comes out to your motor. And that's how every single one of these brushless motors is constructed. You can see the same thing over here. You can see I've got a battery hooked up to it just for demonstration purposes. Um, so your DC power comes in down here goes into here and here you can see a bunch of your MOSFETs. You see them all lined up on both sides of these wires. And then this right here is your trigger which is also your speed control. So you can see as I squeeze the trigger a little bit. Oop, I don't want this guy to fly off on me. Here, let me make sure. Anyway, it doesn't matter. Uh, that's one of the reasons I took this drill apart is because this guy has got a brain box problem and when it's been plugged into the battery for too long it will just fall in a sleep mode. I've never never seen anything like it before. It's not overheating or anything. It just goes into a sleep mode and to fix it all I got to do is unplug it, wait a couple seconds and then plug it back in and then I have power again. How weird is that? You can hear all the different frequencies that this brain box puts out. They're pre-selected speeds. So you can hear, it's like the basic speed, a little faster. It's not, it's not infinitely variable. It's actually in steps. And it's whatever the manufacturer chooses based on this. 
So in a normal brushed motor drill, what you'll see is the power will come straight into the switch and the switch is actually a rheostat. And the rheostat, what it does is it increases the resistance, which decreases the current to the motor. So as you increase resistance, the current decreases, which is how all the other motors adjust their speed. This guy here, I don't know if it's going to pick it up very well. You see these tiny little wires that come out of the power switch right here? You see the wires that come back here. This is your Hall effect sensor on the back of the motor. See all those tiny little wires that come in there? They go in here and we also have some other stuff going on down there. It don't matter. Um, so this guy here is basically a potentiometer. It's not a rheostat. A potentiometer, what it does is it acts like a, a voltage divider and it gives a very tiny signal down here to the computer and it tells it how fast it needs to turn these MOSFETs on and off. So that's what it does. It just pulses these MOSFETs really fast down here to the motor. That's how it propels it forward. And you can see these here are the power wires that go into the motor. So the cool thing about brushless motors, they're very efficient. They use a lot less heat than brush motors and uh, they generate a lot less noise. So if you guys have like an electronic screwdriver or something like that, and you go into, let's say, a surgical room or an EEG room, and you go to take covers off a piece of equipment, you could potentially create problems with that EEG or even an ECG. You could create problems with an ECG if you're close enough because brushed motors create a lot of EMI. That's electromagnetic interference. And uh, it's because the brushes, as they ride on the commutator, they, uh, you know, it's not a perfect seal and it arcs and stuff and it creates noise. So if you're within proximity of a medical device while you're using one of those, it will show up. But brushless motors, these guys are generally reasonably quiet. You'd have to be right next to a device before it shows up. Um, as you can see here, these ones here and the DeWalt's, they're all nice and coated. Everything seems to be sealed up rather well, even though it's kind of dirty, but this this drill has had a very rough life. <laughs> it really has. That's why I don't feel bad about it. I used this drill when I was assembling the CNC machine. I was using it for everything from drilling some of the aluminum down there. I think it finally popped when I was using some of the twist taps, and it doesn't like twist taps. I know. I shouldn't be using twist taps in a drill, but whatever. This guy, it's pretty much done. It's just for demonstration purposes. Maybe I'll go ahead and take this uh, and put it in a Power Wheels Jeep or something like that for my kids. Not really sure yet. Uh, it's just sitting around just because. Why not? But that is a brushless tool. So, guys, that is my video on brushless motors and tools. I've got some other brushless motor videos I'm going to show you guys because these things are very prominent in your life and you don't even realize it. Hope you guys liked the video. I'm trying not to make it too long. Stay tuned. I'm going to have some more for you very soon.